Hey everyone, in the news this week, the architect Raphael Vinoli passed away. He was the man who designed London's walkie-talkie building, so I'm told that the funeral was very sad, but the reception was fantastic. And meaningless statistics are down 12% this week. But let's skip straight to the main news story, which is the Telegraph's hoard of 100,000 secret WhatsApp messages. These were messages to and from Matt Hancock that Isabel Oakshot, who was writing a biography on him, had access to at the time, and she decided to leak the entire thing to the press to prevent what she calls a whitewash. And that makes her about as trustworthy as a politician, so maybe she should just run for office next time. Her and Matt would get on like a house on fire if she weren't busy destroying what's left of his career, and if he wasn't busy getting divorced and shacking up with Gina Condolangelo. Anyway, what do these messages reveal? Well, largely behind the scenes, the government's response to COVID in 2020 was about as shambolic as Boris's appearance, but they largely fit into two broad categories. Part 1. Policy Hours There were a number of major decisions being made behind the scenes by a secret unelected cabal of advisors that were so incoherent that I wonder if some of those advisors are now working with Prince Harry. Face masks were introduced in primary schools largely to avoid an argument with Nicola Sturgeon, and in later care homes were being advised to stop testing in order to make it look like the case count was coming down. There were lines in the conversation like, quote, the death modelling you've been shown is already very wrong, just before they decide as a group what week they should declare the new variant in, in order to get maximum political expediency out of it all. All of this is in WhatsApp, by the way, and it really does retain that social media tone. Matt and his friends scheduling a lockdown reads very much the same as some friends of mine scheduling a boozy Friday night out, especially the bit where Matt is later told there's a photograph doing the rounds of him snogging a work colleague after hours. You know, the last politician to have had that little brains was Kennedy after they shot him. Part two. You know, the second part of this is really the naked abuse of power that's very present in all these messages. There's a bit where Matt is talking to George Osborne at that point, the editor of the Evening Standard, and he offers a lot of positive front page news coverage, but only in exchange for a full sit down interview. Simon Case, a senior civil servant, actively mocked travellers returning home from exotic holidays and then being forced to spend weeks isolating in grubby quarantine hotels by the airport. There's a very ominously authoritarian discussion where they actively discuss if it's possible to target Nigel Farage and use emergency powers to have him jailed after he posted a picture of himself having a pint. Clearly it wasn't just the pint that was bitter. And then there's a discussion about schools reopening and Gavin Williamson just laughing about how teachers, quote, really just hate work, before the pair of them throw in some curse words and some emojis and make fun of the teachers. Oh well, I guess if work was supposed to be fun, the rich would keep more of it for themselves, eh, Matt? Oh, yeah, Matt, I forgot, he did eventually get forced to resign and will be stepping down at the next election, so I guess what goes around comes around. Anyway, see you next week, possibly with more revelations, if Telegraph sees fit. Otherwise, see you next week. If you like these, click subscribe.